Welcome everyone, I'm Alicia Kraus with The Daily Wire. Today, we're talking with Liz Wheeler. She's the host of Tipping Point on One American News. Liz, thanks so much for being here. Alicia, thanks for having me. It's of, great to be here. Of course, love having you. So there's lots of stories happening this week. Let's jump right into it. First, we have NFL owners unanimously passing a new rule that requires that players who choose to be on the field for the national anthem stand and respect the flag. Vice President Pence says that this is another hashtag winning moment for conservatives. Do you agree with that? I don't know if it's just a win for conservatives here. I personally, um, and I know this is really controversial, I personally have no problem with private entities uh, saying how they want their employees to behave while their employees are at the workplace. Let's remember the NFL is an employer and the NFL players are employees. I mean, if you and I walked into our workplace, got on air and yelled, we hate America or something obscene, uh, we would be told that that is not appropriate behavior and we would be censured for that. I think it's appropriate if the NFL wants to do that. Uh, to set that to set that parameter, I think also all the teams voted unanimously, right? This mm -hmm. wasn't even controversial within the uh, what is it, twelve NFL teams? Yeah, and I think maybe that's because they saw their ratings taking a massive right. plummet after this whole stunt last year. So we'll see what the season looks like and if they can get those ratings up. Some teams, I think, including the Buffalo Bills and maybe even the New York Jets, have said that not only do their guys need to do this, but they are also requiring them to be on the field for the national anthem. So it'll be interesting oh, to right. see if any other teams make that decision as well. But um, moving on, unfortunately, last week, there was another horrific school shooting, this time in Texas. And last time after the Parkland shooting back in February, we had a CNN town hall, multiple high school students becoming instant celebrities, and national marches being planned across the country. But now, just days after this Texas shooting, the media seems that like they've just totally moved on. So why right. do you think there's such a difference here? Well, probably two reasons. First of all, I think liberals are learning a lesson that when you push for really strict gun control measures, it doesn't sit well with the American people. It particularly doesn't sit well with that demographic of Americans who voted for President Obama in 2008 and 2012, but then voted for President Trump in 2016. Those people don't want their guns taken away. And liberals, I think this time after Parkland, uh, compared to all the other times that they've made pushes for gun control, made it pretty clear that they wanted to take our guns away. So that's probably reason number one. The polling just didn't pan out. It wasn't a politically winning issue for them. And they do have a big election coming up in 2018. The second reason, I think, is because of all the gun control proposals that Democrats have been pushing. When we look at the surrounding data that we have about the Santa Fe shooting that happened in Texas, None of those proposals, had they already been codified into law, had Democrats been successful in pushing them, would have stopped this shooter. I mean, background checks wouldn't have stopped him. Ammunition, background checks wouldn't have stopped him. Banning AR-15s wouldn't have stopped him. Uh, all the different things that Democrats are pushing for, none of those things, even if they had been law, would have prevented this. So what really are they, what's their argument here? Got it. I also think there has to be something too, is they understood that the constituency maybe of Texas right, is very Texas. different from Parkland, Florida, which, you know, we, we've we had a couple of the conservative students from that school on this week on Michael Knowles' show. And they said, of course, like 99% of that school is liberal. So it's a different audience that they, you know, maybe knew that they couldn't win. But yeah, um, that's true. we also have this, you mentioned the midterms. So let's move on to that topic now. The constant drip drip of this Russia investigation. Stormy Daniels is still in the news. Of course, I've never seen so many gay men ecstatic to talk about a female porn star before. <laughs> the city of West Hollywood is giving her a whole day. And now we have all this information about this FBI informant in the Trump campaign. Do you think that this hurts or helps President Trump and Republicans this year? Um, probably half and half. I mean, I don't think the Stormy Daniels story is helpful for President Trump. It doesn't reflect well on him uh, in a character sense. But I think it, it also hasn't impacted polls, which is very interesting to look at. It hasn't impacted the president's approval or disapproval rating or whether Republicans or Democrats like him or dislike him. And I think this is something interesting we talked about on my show last week. I think it's because a lot of especially evangelical Christian voters had already taken this type of behavior. Trump's admitted to his sexual promiscuity in the past. They've already calculated this type of behavior into what they think of him and whether they think he could be a good president. So in that sense, no, I don't think Stormy Daniels helps him. But all of the false allegations being thrown at him, this, you know, what he calls a witch hunt, uh, the intelligence community abusing their powers of surveillance and a appearing to target the president mm. and uh, his campaign staffers because they don't like him. That, yeah, I do think that helps him in a sense. Uh, it's never helpful to be under attack in and of itself, but it's certainly galvanizing his supporters to come to his defense 
which sometimes don't, doesn't happen two years into a presidency. That, that's very true. It'll be interesting to see if President Trump can buck the trend of a sitting president, which statistically they usually lose midterm elections. Right. But some polling is looking really good for Republicans. Um, so the other day, another cultural issue here, Starbucks announced that anyone who walks into a Starbucks is a customer, even if they don't buy anything. So do you think that Starbucks will eventually regret this new kind of politically correct decision that they've made? Oh, this is going to backfire big time. This, I mean, what if they're basically turning themselves into a homeless shelter? Oh, God. If, if their policy is that you can hang out in there and loiter uh, without buying anything, you can use the bathroom, how are they actually going to differentiate between people who are essentially living in their cafe. I mean, if I were homeless, that's where I would go if they said that you could be there without buying anything. Yeah, and we I don't know about you down in San Diego, but here in LA, we already have a big problem with that. Thanks, yeah. thanks, Garcetti. <laughs> yeah, right, no, I think they're, they're, they're virtue signaling. They're trying to make it seem like they're woke, like they're so progressive that they can, you know, handle the criticism. They can, you know, check their white guilt here and make everything better. But no, as a business, it's gonna backfire big time. Okay, we'll have to wait and see. If Democrats went back the House, do you, the going assumption, and even some this week have said that they want to impeach President Trump, do you think that this is going to backfire? Oh, definitely. I almost kind of hope they do try it. <laughs> not, I mean, it's not good for our country. So in that sense, I hope they don't try it. But yeah, this is going to galvanize uh, not only Republicans, but there are actually, believe it or not, a hefty percentage of Democrats who are rational people too. Those are the Democrats we don't see on cable news. Uh, they don't They don't want to relitigate this election. They don't like President Trump, and that's fine. They're allowed to choose not to like the president. But they respect our democratic elections. They respect our republic. And they don't want to just tear somebody down uh, via impeachment when there's no proof of any high crimes and misdemeanors. And Alicia, I have not talked to a single Democrat who can answer that question. Uh, what has he done? Where yeah. is the proof? They cannot answer that. They just don't like him. You and me both. I, I, I personally think, but I want to know your opinion on this. Do you think that a part of Trump kind of wants this to happen? That he likes the drama of it? Oh, like the twisted aspect, like yeah. bring it on. We'll yeah. see. I'll take you on for that too. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I guess I don't always understand the inner workings of our president's mind mm -hmm. here, but he does seem, he does seem always to be willing and eager and very capable to take on people that attack him. So if it's going to raise, if it's going to get galvanized supporters to support him even more and to turn out in the midterms or afterward for his reelection in 2020. I don't know. I don't think he would hate it, but I don't think he likes it as a person to be under attack either. Nobody does. Reporters from CNN and Politico were recently barred from a EPA event with, with Secretary Pruitt over there. And the president has also tweeted that he's considered removing certain media credentials, I think mainly from CNN, from White House press briefings. Do you think that this move is smart or really short-sighted? Well, there's two things here. No, I never think it's smart to remove the credentials of mainstream journalists. It just makes it just makes it look like you're trying to use your power to silence them. So that's not a good move. It's not a winning move. I don't think the president is actually going to do that. So I'm not that, I guess, up in arms about it. We know the president makes comments out of emotion off the cuff and he doesn't follow through with it. So until he does, I'm just going to sort of brush it off and say, like, no, that's a dumb idea. But let me know when it's a reality. My understanding, though, of the situation that happened um, with Pruitt was not that these uh, news outlets were barred because of who they are, because Trump doesn't like CNN or whatnot. My understanding, and I wasn't there, so these are just the reports that I've read, was that there was a limited number of seats at the briefing and that once those seats were filled, uh, the rest of the journalists were, were told, hey, you have to sit in another room, but we have a live feed uh, streaming to you in there. If that's the case, then the mainstream media you know, is obviously crying wolf. If there's something I don't know, if someone was targeted specifically, uh, then that's wrong. But it seems it seems if that's the case, it's odd to me because the Democrats didn't have a problem with that happening under the Obama administration, didn't have a problem with Obama targeting AP journalists or wired or snooping on the emails yeah. of James Rosen, who at the time was with Fox News. So it's, it's probably just a case of overreaction, I think. All right. You know, do as they say, not as they do, I suppose. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it depends. Their reaction depends on which guy is in the White House. Well, right. Liz, this has been so much fun. Thanks for coming on today. And to everyone else watching, thank you so much. I'm Alicia Krause for The Daily Wire, and I'll see you soon. Yeah.